Imagine waking up to find yourself stranded on an island with no way off. That is, in effect, what's happened in Vermont, where floodwaters brought by Irene have left 13 towns cut off from the rest of the world, and their water treatment plants have Elsewhere failed. Elsewhere in the storm zone, 2.8 million homes and businesses in 13 states and the District of Columbia still have no electricity. Good evening, thank you for joining us. The mayors of both Montreal and Laval have declared states of emergency. The number of flooded homes and evacuations has increased again and the need for help from the military has grown. Floods continue to test resiliency across America each year. In the Northeast, Lake Champlain and the Richelieu River form a complex transboundary watershed that lies within Quebec, Vermont, and New York. The lake flows northward into what becomes the Richelieu River. In 2011, historic snowfall and spring flood levels inundated communities bordering these water bodies, as well as their tributaries. While the U.S. holds 84% of the watershed, Quebec experienced 80% of the flood damages. Following the floods, which lasted a grueling 67 days and yielded a collective $250 million in emergency aid spending, the IJC began the Lake Champlain and Richelieu River Flood Mitigation Study in 2015 to study the causes and impacts of the floods and present mitigation strategies to help communities respond to the next flood. The diverse study group is composed of professionals from all three respective places who are working collaboratively to create a report of the most accepted flood mitigation options for the basin in 2021. Once completed, the IJC will hand over the mitigation proposals to the U.S. and Canadian governments. In a binational watershed, the study group faces unique challenges engaging with the public, who have been impacted from the flooding in different ways. In Quebec, these floods registered as the second most important natural disaster in history. Effects were far-reaching throughout the basin. Drinking water was deemed unsafe, sewer backups filled the streets, and ecologically, the watershed could take years to recover from increased nutrient load, elevated bacteria levels, and unfit water supply conditions. The next flood is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Nearly eight years have passed, and the continued pressures of nature and climate change are demanding diverse, effective, and forward-thinking solutions and emergency plans. One of the mitigation measures from the IJC includes reducing high water levels by removing submerged barriers and implementing the use of weirs. The rock shoals of St. John Sir Richelieu and the Friar Island Dam, both obsolete, still act to impede the flow of the river. The IJC proposed modifying the Chambly Canal, which was expanded previously and affects the rate the lake can regulate itself in times of high flow. Options such as improved floodplain management and the restoration of wetlands have also been put forth. To help emergency responders, a real-time bi-national flood forecasting system is proposed to help communities prepare and respond to floods. I attended the study group's three-day conference. What I've learned is that human impact from flooding will always be harder to manage than flooding. Study board members representing their respective homes deliberated, collaborated, agreed, and disagreed over what is best for the watershed and what they had to show residents for the progress they've made. Fostering these hard discussions is vital to the health of binational aquatic ecosystems and communities. The following month, I attended town hall meetings in Vermont, New York, and Quebec for a chance to see the IJC interact with flood victims and concerned residents who are waiting at the hands of government to protect the places they call home. Residents are scared yet passionate about the resiliency of their communities. The Lake Champlain Basin will see increased winter-spring floods. With increased rain levels, professions, and cultures defined by the North Country like agricultural production, coastline tourism, winter sports, and maple syrup production are all threatened with decreases in suitable days for production or use. The collaborative efforts of professionals across disciplines and borders instill values of leadership, optimism, and contribution in mitigation development and community activism. Watershed management and flood response will continue to challenge policymakers as community stability is threatened and climate change ravages. They will go through the process of flood recovery again as their values are tested and how emergency response leaders adapted and learned from the 2011 floods will be revealed. Because as a New York flood victim stated, Mother Nature bats last.